I'm going to show you all how to turn any photo and add the fast motion blur effect. Now, in order to create this effect, it's really simple. All we need to do is first of all, unlock this layer and we want to press Control or Command and J three times. We're going to hide the original and we want to rename the first one to body, the middle one to wheels. And of course, the last one is going to be a background. We want to hide the background and the wheels and we're going to focus on the body first. And what we want to do is we want to separate the car from the background. And the best way to remove a background in Photoshop is definitely using the pen tool. With the pen tool, we're going to zoom in and start on this edge right here. And you want to left click once and then left click again and drag this out to curve your line. You can also hold Alt or Option key and then left click on the point and this will stop it from duplicating the previous curve. And from here, we can just continue on going all the way around the edges. You can also use the space bar to quickly move around and this just makes it so much easier to look around the photo. Once you get to the very last one, you just want to connect it up to the first one. And now you have a full path selection. All we need to do now is go to selection at the top, set it to zero since we don't need the edges to be soft. Press OK. And then you just want to get yourself a mask on this layer. And as you can see, we have separated the vehicle from the background and we can now hide this layer and also do the same for the wheels. With the wheels, we want to select this layer and once again, go in around the wheels. You can also select this gap right here as well. You can then go to selection, set it to zero, press OK. And for this one, we want to get ourselves a mask layer on this one as well. We can also temporarily disable this mask by holding shift, left clicking on the mask, and now we can also do the second wheel as well. Once again, go to selection, press OK, and now we want to hold shift, left click on the mask to bring this back, and we can fill this in by using the bucket tool, set it to a Y color, make sure you are selecting the mask and then left click on here to reveal the wheel. We can now press Ctrl and D to deselect it. And now we have the wheels and also the body as well. However, for the body, we need to remove the wheels so they are completely separated. In order to do this, all we need to do is hold Ctrl left click on the mask for the wheels and then selecting the mask for the body. We want to go to the black color and then fill this in to remove it from here. Press Ctrl and D to deselect it. And you can also use the brush tool to remove any leftovers. And there we go. We now have the body and the wheels separated from this photo. We also need a layer with purely just the background. So in order to remove this car from the background, all we have to do is get ourselves the polygonal lasso tool. What we want to do is we want to left click on here and we want to have a guess what the road would look like. We can then go all the way around the bottom half of the car, making sure you also select the shadows. And then once you get to the last one, connect it up. We want to go to edit and then go down to content aware fill. However, we need to make sure we are selecting the background in order to be able to click on content aware fill. In here, we will have all of the options available, such as the reference areas. So the green area is the reference it's going to use. Now, in this case, we don't need it to use the background. 
while we are selecting the brush tool on a minus, we can subtract the background and tell Photoshop that we don't need the background of the buildings or the vehicle and other things such as the pavement. We only need the road. We also don't need the path. And there we go, that's not looking too bad so far. However, if we tweak around with the color adaptation, we can set this one to high. And sometimes this will look better compared to before. Once you're happy with the settings, we can go ahead and press apply. And we're going to focus on the next area, which is the corner bit for this path right here. Now for this one, we're going to go to the polygonal lasso tool. And we're going to left click on the path right here. And for this one, once again, we're just going to have a guess of where it's going to end. Going all the way around this area, connect it up. For this one, we're going to once again use the brush tool, subtract this area, and also the road as well. This message will come up, you just want to press OK. And now we're going to go to the plus and give it this path area as a reference. We may need to just subtract certain areas and just fix it up a little bit. For now, we're going to apply the changes. And then we're going to also do the last bit, which is the top half. Same as last time using the polygonal lasso tool, we're going to go all the way around. Connect it up and there we go. Same as last time, we're going to once again use the brush tool and this time we're just going to remove the pavement from here. Same as the building. And we only want to give it the reference of the building in the background right here. And also the sky as well. We can also give it this side as well. We're going to press apply one final time. And then you want to set it to a current layer. Press OK. And now we're going to press Ctrl and D to deselect it. All we need to do now is just correct this building right here. And the easiest way to do this is to use the clone stamp tool. Using the clone stamp tool, if you hold Alt, you can left click on this area. We're just going to try and get it as straight as possible by applying it onto the building. Once you've corrected the background and you're happy with the results, you can then bring back the image and the body as well. All we need to do now in order to create the fast motion effect is to select the background. We want to go to filter, go down to blur gallery and get yourself into the path blur. This will give you this arrow, which allows you to control the direction of which the blur is going to be in. In this case, what we can do is we can first of all, turn the speed down to zero, and we can look at this image and see the direction of the image and the perspective. So in this case, we can actually use parts of the road to create this arrow and make it go in the right direction. You can add yourself another line by left clicking on here, dragging this out and get yourself another one down here. We want to get ourselves another one down here, one further down, one in the middle as well, one at the top. 
and then the final one on the sky as well. Once you've got yourself the lines, we can now edit the amount of the lines and how much motion blur you want it to apply. If you click on edit blur shape, this will give you the option to be able to change the amount on the first one and the second one. For the first one, we're going to set this one to 50. Same goes for the other ones as well. Now that we've set all of these ones to 50, since it's further away, the ones that are closer are going to be much higher. This one down here is going to be all the way up to 2000. Same goes for this one and this one at the bottom. As you get closer to the top, you want to start reducing the number. So this one's going to be a thousand. The next one is going to be, let's say 500. We're going to go to 400 or 300. And the very last one is going to be a hundred. Now that you've applied the changes, you can apply the speed. And let's say we're going to set this to 60. You can go ahead and press OK. And this may take a while for it to process the blur. The next thing to do is, of course, to also make the wheels spin. We can hide the background layer and also the body. Make sure you are selecting the wheels and we can go up to filter go down to Blur Gallery and go down to Spin Blur. We're going to first of all set this to zero for the amount. You want to drag this down and apply it onto the wheel. Once you've applied it onto the wheel, we can hold Alt and then move this to the center of the wheel. This will make it spin from this location. We can then set this to 36 and also make sure that this one is touching the top. We can do the same for the other one as well. You can then go ahead and press OK. And now we have the wheels spinning. However, it's only spinning on one side. And in order to make the front of it spin as well, it's really simple. We want to get ourselves the smudge tool, making sure you are still selecting the image. You just want to smudge this and make it look like it's spinning. We can now unhide the background and the body and we have the wheel spinning with the car. However, at the moment it looks like it's floating and we can fix this by using the brush tool, selecting a black color. We can set this to a brush size of let's say 300 or 250. You want to get yourself a new layer above the background and we just want to brush this underneath the vehicle. You can left click once, hold shift, left click again, and this will get you a straight connection. So you just want to get yourself some shadows underneath the car. If you make it larger, you can once again, left click, hold shift, and then left click again to get a much bigger area. We can get ourselves a mask layer on this one and just correct it up a little bit. And there you go, there is your fast motion blur effect. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click on the screen and watch the next video. Until next time, I'll see you all in that next video. Bye.